Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, as we continue on with our VGC Series 8 content, we're going to be featuring a Zygarde team. As you can see, it is on the screen in front of you right now. As always, there will be a poker paste down in the description below. So if you want to check that out, see the details of the team, I'll jump on showdown with it, then be my guest. And if you stick around until the end of the episode, I'll be throwing up a rental code of this team so you can try it out for yourselves on the doubles rank ladder hopefully you're looking forward to the episode and without further ado friends let's get into our first game of today Up first today, we've got a Shadow Rider Calyrex and Ndidi, a Thunderous, Incineroar, Regieleki and Urshifu. So a very familiar team to myself. It's something that I've been playing quite a lot. A uh, very strong team indeed and something that we can't really take too lightly. You know, you've got the Thunderous is going to be this main centerpiece, really getting those, um, uh, taking advantage of those max turns um, with the max Steel Spike, max uh, Airstream, things like that. We've got to be careful not to proc uh, the Defiant ability on that to let it get out of control. Uh, and then you've got two very good support and Pokemon in the Calyrex Shadow Rider and the Urshifu, which are going to be hitting very hard. Um, I think screen support definitely is going to be very useful here. It's probably more useful than the Intimidate from the Incineroar that we've got. I think Zygarde's generally quite a, a good Pokemon, um, in all honesty. Um, we could as well lead with Thunderous because the Eerie Impulse support is going to be quite nice. Um, and the Swagger support could be quite useful as well. Zygarde we have to bring it's going to be a, a main kind of centerpiece here and it's then what do we bring as our, our last Pokemon you know the thing is if we can get rid of the Incineroar my opponent really does struggle to deal with Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn can like sap up damage all at once but Incineroar makes a little more sense because of the dark typing against the um, a Ghost Rider the Calyrex which is just a nightmare to face it's got Mudshot of course but those big ghost type attacks, the Astro Barrage, if you've got something that can come in kind of resist those, it makes such a difference, you know, it really helps out a lot. So I think it's going to be this match kind of uh, stalling out the Dynamax turns with whatever my opponent decides to, whatever route they decide to go down. Uh, and then from there, I think probably um, getting Zygarde in on the field, get a Swagger boost and then trying to just chip away at my opponent's team like you know that the Incineroar can go down as I got quite easily uh Calyrex will if we can get the swagger boost um so it's just about kind of trying to control the field as best as possible we've got fake out uh, as a as a threat here from the Incineroar for sure it can be something that can come on to either Thunderous or Grimmsnarl more likely the Grimmsnarl to stop the screen support um but we've got two ways to kind of neuter the Calyrex and that's what we want to do because it's such a big hard hitter you know we need to be able to really mitigate that damage as best we can and i think between grimmsnarl and thunderous you, you can only fake out one of those pokemon if you go down that route but we're going to be able to either get our screens up or we're going to get an eerie impulse up so we're going to be in a good spot next turn be interesting to see what the calyrex goes for here um it may hmm, i don't know probably the the astro bra oh max god hey there we go okay didn't expect that wasting a turn of dynamax straight away is something i can I'm super happy to uh, to take advantage of here. Um, they know that we're Prankster as well because obviously the Intimidate didn't proc the Defiant ability on our Thunderous. As we see a Flare Blitz come out from the Incineroar, going straight for a um, just attack into Thunderous. Wants to take it down, obviously doesn't want to have to deal with that. Um, and because of the uh, the Unnerve ability uh, as one ability on the Calyrex, we don't proc our Citrus Berry, which isn't great but we can go for a spirit break we can go for an eerie impulse we may lose thunderous here but it will give us the opportunity if thunderous goes down we get the eerie impulse into calyrex we've got a light screen up we'll also have a spirit break onto the calyrex as well it means that zygod can kind of hit the field not have to worry at all really about <laughs> oh my god we take it we take it please say it's life orb because that would be insane if we do um it is life. That's a life or max phantasm. That's absolutely nuts. The Incineroar, yeah, going to get another Flare Blitz off, but that's fine. Doing some big fat damage there. And picking up the burn, which is ah, really, really frustrating for us, you know. Um, really frustrating. Uh, but I mean, we have you have to you have to deal with this. It's always a secondary attack. I think now's the time. We'll probably want to preserve Thunderous and try and get a Swagger off into 
uh, as Zygarde, I think it's probably a good time to do it. We've got the Intimidate that would be a little bit more irritating for us to deal with out on the field at the minute. So unless my opponent decides to switch Incineroar out right now, then we can get Zygarde in a good position. You know, the Calyrex is so weak. It's minus three. We've got a light screen up. It's not going to be doing really any notable damage to Zygarde here. Um, and if Grimmsnarl goes down, at least it's done its job. It's got screens up. Um, or at least the ones that we want. And uh, we're going to be able to get this Schwaga boost. Oh, we can't. We can't get the Lumberry. We can't get the Lumberry. We need the... Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is not good. Okay. I forget. I forget that we've got the uh, the Lumberry can't. The thing is, the, the Calyrex has to switch out at some point, which would help us. Which would definitely help us in, um, in like, just getting that Lumberry activated so we're not confused. That's what we want. That's what we need. We need the Calyrex to get off the field. Get off the field. Okay, Incineroar going out, which is fine. It means Grimmsnarl gets to stick around a little bit longer. It means we get to throw up a light screen right now, which is exactly what we want. And if the Calyrex switches out to Incineroar, which I'm expecting it to do, it means we can get a Max Quake into that slot, get a Lumberry, and we're sitting in a pretty nice position. So we are going to Max. We're going to go for the Quake into the Calyrex. We want to just continue to try and boost our defenses if we can. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Pew, 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 pew. So we get the Lumberry. That's ideal. Okay, now we're plus two. Incineroar are going to come in, take us down to minus one. Uh, plus one, sorry. Minus one. No, no chance. And then we get the, the defense boost. Probably lose Grimmsnarl here, I would imagine. Unless the um, the Urshifu decides to go after Zygarde. But I mean, if you are in a max form, you're not really going to be doing too much damage, right? Okay, well, we're still in business. We're still in business. Um, the Lumberry. You know, it's like it's like these it's like the terrains, you know, where you're like, ah, well prankster well prankster swagger the opponent in a psychic terrain. It never quite works out, does it? But uh, yeah, the all one ability is nuts because it's two abilities in one, so you do tend to forget about that. We'll take that all day long, you know. I um, I really don't mind the Urshifu doing that uh, because now. We're going to be able to remove this Incineroar from the field. We get the special defense boost as well, which is really invaluable to us. And we're kind of on that momentum switch now. You know, we've still got to be a little bit careful about the, the Calyrex Shadow Rider coming in. But Zygarde's sitting in a pretty decent spot. The next chunk of damage that we take um, will mean that we are probably going to get a 100% complete form of power construct ability should activate okay there we go a nerve so um let's take a look at the state of play what we're looking at screen wise we've still got plenty of screen screen time um now do i want to sack nah well i mean i could switch i could switch in incineroar here uh we'll keep Grim Snarl because it's probably a good time, especially if the Thunderous is in the back. I don't expect it is. Um, but it's whether, like if we go after the Urshifu here rather than the Calyrex. But the Calyrex is such a big threat. Like Urshifu, we can put down to minus one. It can go for a Wicked Blow. It's probably better to go after the Calyrex here. The Calyrex might protect. But I don't think so. I think it goes Astral Barrage to get rid of the Grim Snarl and get a bit more damage onto uh, Zygarde. That would be my bet. Um, and although Grim Snarl and Thunderous in the back, oh yeah, you see it is protecting. But this is the thing. If it protects here, it would have been better to go into the, the Urshifu. Yeah. Because then the next turn we've got the like we've got the fake out. Um Fake out to break the sash or just knock it out from its sash if it is sashed. But we are going to get a power construct up, which is useful, I guess. But the Urshifu is definitely a problem for us to deal with now. Um, now we do have we do have fake out what we can utilize onto the Urshifu, but it might be better going for steel spike. Mm, it's just the thing is with. Yeah, I think we fake out. And what are we looking like? Okay. 
is it worth getting a defense boost? Because we can go Steel Spike into Calyrex now. It will pick up the knockout. It just means Zygarde's a little bit e a bit harder to take down, especially if they go down. Okay, yeah, they should be going to switch out, which is fine. Regieleki going to come in. Okay, now if Regieleki is Sash, then we break the Sash there. So we'll get the fake out. It would have been better to snarl, really, expecting maybe that switch out there. Okay. Oh my god, we take that like an absolute champ. Right, well, the defense boost here is super nice. We've got a complete form. We know that Regieleki can't really do anything to us. Um being Zygarde, so we don't really need to worry about that too much. This next turn, I think we just Thousand Arrows, Flare Blitz into the Urshifu, and um, that should be enough to take the Urshifu down. Well, it will 100% be enough to take the Urshifu down. I don't think we go down to a, a Wicked Blow. Not with a Reflect up. Um, I think the only thing my opponent could do is maybe Protect. Oh, it, uh, Wicked Blow still feels like it could be quite dicey, you know? Um, we can't protect in front of it. There's no point because obviously the um, the ability on Urshifu doesn't allow us to uh, to protect ourselves. Because I just hit through it. So I think they have to go after Zygarde with a Wicked Blow and hope that it's enough to take us down. No, not quite. Okay, well, there we go. Um, you see, when when you're in the yellow against Urshifu, and you know it's got that crit w wicked blow, it's like, mm, is it gonna? Are we gonna have enough? But Zygarde having enough there to do to deal with that, and hopefully this flare blitz. Come on, Insin, please be enough. Oh, it's so close. Oh, we get the burn. We get the burn. Okay, I think at this point, if we hadn't got the burn, I think what we'd have to do is switch Zygarde out, uh, sack Grimmsnarl. Flare Blitz again into the Urshifu, which is kind of forced to continually go after the Zygarde um, and then get Zygarde in against Regieleki one on one. So I think the burn makes it easier, um, but I think we would have been all right because we've got the Reflect up. The close combat's not going to be enough to take down Incineroar, and with the Reflect support as well, I don't think Thunderbolt close combat would be enough to get Incineroar if they double tapped into that target. So I think overall we'd be all right in that situation but again the burn definitely helps us out so very good game to my opponent we get off to a nice start and we'll jump straight in to our next game my friends okay our second match today is a team of reggie steel alchemy moltres galarian form porygon 2 latias and eveltal so a very interesting team the first thing that sticks out to me is the alchemy it's going to be going for those decorate boosts onto a number of different targets here. You could go for the Eveltal, the Latias, and the Moltres, and even the Porygon too, you know, so it's going to be tricky. Zygarde doesn't have too bad a time here, honestly. I think the thing that we need to really mitigate a lot of is uh, getting those decorate boosts null and void if we can. Thunderous helps out with that with Taunt. There's no fake out on my opponent's team to prevent us getting the Taunt off. And the Eerie Impulse support, it's very specially based, this team. And then the only, like, the one that we would say is a bit more of a threat than anything else is a Reggie Steel, which could go for those Iron Defense boosts, and that would be a little bit tricky to deal with for sure. Um, do we lead off the bat with Zygarde, though? That's the big question. Uh, probably, probably not. Um... Could go Grimmsnarl. I don't... <laughs> Grimmsnarl's not bad. It does give us a, a bit of more of a, an offensive pressure against everything. And then I think if we go Tapu Fini... I'm kind of tempted to go Ferrothorn as well because the Leech Seed support could be really invaluable here. But I think Tapu Fini, if we can get the boosts up and get it next to Zygarde in this game, get some boosts while we're maxed, I think that's going to help us out a bunch. So... See how we get on in this 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 next one, and uh, hopefully Zygarde can uh, can pull through. Like Zygarde's always one of those Pokemon as well that I'm like very comfortable with. I'm never unless we have a really bad matchup against something like Ice Rider Calyrex, which I do fear quite a lot because of just the the immediate damage that it can pump out with us. Um, Life Orb, Glacial Lances. It's hard to get around. 
but otherwise it's a quite a solid Pokemon where you can bring in, you know, if you've got the screen support and things like that, then you, you're in a decent spot. We're going to taunt the Alchemy because, like I say, I don't want to entertain the Decorate boosts or anything like that. And we'll go for a Light Screen just to give us a little bit of security against potentially a Porygon 2 maxing here, which we're going to see. Um, and throwing out those Max Hailstorms, which I was uh, kind of half expecting. Uh, so that's what my opponent's going for. It's a nice strat, you know, you, you're boosting up a Pokemon uh, that, that's very, very difficult to take down, has a, an easy time once it's got those those plus uh, attack stats to really start cutting through teams. But um, being able to kind of shut it down with the Prankster Taunt is, is really invaluable for us, you know. Uh, Thunderous definitely going to be the target here i would imagine but we're in a position now where we can really neuter the uh, the p2 this next turn we've got the option to go uh, really just stall out these dynamax turns you know eerie impulse and spirit break take it down to minus three behind the light screen it's not going to be doing enough damage at all the alchemy is in a position now where my opponent has to switch it out so we can take a look at what they've got in their team just to refresh ourselves and see what potentially they could bring in to support the p2 throughout the rest of these dynamax turns so my opponent can try and get the momentum kind of swing going their way um We'll see what they've got. What could they bring in here potentially that could cause us a few issues? Maybe the Reggie Steel could come in. Uh, it would be the one thing that could come in and take a bunch of attacks. And it's probably something that I'm not too worried about. So I don't really need to concern myself with something coming in here. We could just see a Dazzling Gleam, of course, uh, which we're probably going to do. But I mean, between, uh, yeah, that. And we'll get the Spirit Break off before the, the P2 can attack and get out. A citrus berry as well so thunder is going to be able to stick around for another turn and just show it's it's worth in this match which is just invaluable you know as you get the spirit break and the porygon 2 is like completely useless right now completely useless going for a max strike and then the next turn you know um we've got the option where we could potentially go after we could bring in zygod but it's a little bit tricky with the alchemy even though we've got the light screen up um the other option is we take Grimmsnarl out of the picture, we e re impulse the Alchemy here, and then we bring in Zygod for the Grimmsnarl. Um, because then we could hmm, then we could swagger ourselves and get ourselves set up as they're not Dynamaxed anymore, which is not a bad play because minus two Alchemy. With the light screen up, Dazzling Gleam, we're going to be able to take pretty comfortably. The Porygon 2 down on minus 3. We've got the light screen up as well. Uh, so, you know, my opponent's not really got any sort of impetus to do the damage that they need. Zygarde's probably in a good position now to come in and be able to take these attacks pretty comfortably. Obviously, we don't want to see a Max Hailstorm from the Porygon 2. Um, the Dazzling Gleam, let's see what the damage is like. Oh, we take that like a champ. Like a champ. Max Strike coming out again, which is probably the better option for the, the P2 right now to get those uh, speed speed drops on the Pokemon we've got on the field. So this next turn, I think uh, we've got a couple of options. What we could go for, we could go for a Swagger if we want, but we could probably um, try... Uh, are they going to set the Trick Room up? I don't think so. The, the thing is, like, I could go for the Taunt into P2, stop the Trick Room um, getting set up. But the Max Strikes have not really been super favorable to my opponent to set the trick room up now so we're probably in a position where we're better off going for the swagger the taunt is going to wear off on that alchemy soon if it's not already worn off have i missed it let's just let's just see it has so we need to taunt it because we cannot we cannot allow it to um we can't allow it to start decorating we cannot I think if we max steel spike into Alchemy and taunt it, I think that's probably the best option for us. Um, because we can just mitigate any sort of decorate abuse right now. Because it could switch the P2 out. It would make sense because it's such a... It's so weak. It's not doing anything on the field. Okay, well, they've gone the other way. We can't taunt or eerie impulse any to love. But... Yeah, they're pulling the double switch, which is fine. So, I mean, Thunderous gets to see another day. We're going to get a Steel Spike boost. Um, they're potentially trying to catch us out with going for a Max Quake here. Um, but we've got the, the other option in Steel Spike. 
and we've got a nice play where we can bring Tapu Fini onto the field now and, and even preserve Thunderous for later in this game, which gives us a little bit more additional support against things like the Porygon 2 and the uh, the Alchemy. So we'll get the Steel Spikes up. But really, we want to be getting... The problem is we want to be getting the Max Quakes like under our belt, like in all honesty, because... Um, Th that's that's like my opponent's team is pretty much all all special based like all of it all special based uh we can eerie impulse the latias here maybe that's not a bad idea or we could swagger we could swagger as i god which might not be a bad play so i do worry about the latias going after us um i'm gonna swagger I'm going to swagger. I think we're fine behind a light screen. We've got to take this opportunity, I think. Swagger. Swagger support. There we go. Let's get that plus two. The only issue would be, obviously, foul play from the... Um, from the Veltal now. Would cause us all sorts of issues. Ooh, a nice beam as well. Not so great. And a snarl. Well, we'll... We'll, we don't need to worry too much about that but like I say a foul player could be a bit problematic ice beam definitely not something we want to be a, be contending with too much and we need to hope that this plus two steel spike is enough to take the Latias down which it is uh, which is good the problem is now um, my opponent can bring an Alchemy um, and yeah, the, the the dazzling gleam foul play combination could be could be bad for us, um, but maybe a moon blast from Finny would be enough to get the Evelto. I need to have a look at its need to have a look at its health. Um, yeah, the Finny's going to be the better option, I think. Here, we've got one turn of max left. P2 coming in. Okay. So it kind of makes me feel like we, pro we probably are going to see a foul play. And I think I've got to be careful with how I uh, with how I approach this turn. Because actually foul play and ice beam shouldn't take us down. Unless they get the special attack. Yeah, they do. Hmm. The ice beam is still going gonna, it's, it's gonna to hit us so hard. But we got the option here where we can we can uh, calm mind. A moon blast. Moon blast should take down the Evelto. Actually, Evelto so bulky. That's a problem. With Grim Snow, I think we could probably win this with just Tapu Fini. It's just the uh, the P two that's a bit of an issue. It's a bit obnoxious. Like that's the one thing I worry about more than anything else. Let's just stay on the field and go after the P2. Hope that Zygog can take it. Yeah, it's going to take. It's going to take the Ice Beam. It'll take the Ice Beam. I'm pretty sure now. So Dark Pulse. They haven't got foul play. Okay. Oh, we take it. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. I don't know if this will be enough to get the P2. I'm hoping it is. The Special Defense boost though onto the... The Finny. Ah, okay. There we go. Okay, we've got this locked now. Because now we just take down the Evelto. We don't need to worry about Evelto getting boosted up too much by the the Decorate. The plus two is definitely going to be a threat to us for sure because uh, they're going to be able to Oblivion Wing um, Tapu Finny, which is still going to hit us hard, but we have got plus two special defense. And if they go after, if they make that play, if they make the Decorate and Oblivion Wing play, into Tapu Fini, then they can't attack Zygod, and we can Thousand Arrows, and we still got Grim Snarl in the back, so I feel like we'll be alright, Zygod doing some work here, Snarl coming out, we can take that, no we can't take it, we can't take it, are we going to see a Decorate, I don't know, maybe, maybe not, just a Dazzle, but we get that off before they're able to attack, so that's useful. Oh, we need Grim Snarl. Okay. Okay. Grim Snarl not faster than. 
We could swagger the Veltel, there's always that option. I think probably doubling into Veltel now, because once he Veltel's off the field, like Alcrimi can't beat Tapu Fini, just with the bulk that we've got. I would just worry, I'd still worry about Oblivion Wing. Decorate Oblivion Wing would be... But the thing is, the Veltel's going to Oblivion Wing before the Decorate can happen, so it's not like it's... Yeah, it's not like it's massively of an issue. So it's just whether or not we can take a Dazzling Gleam from the Alchemy, which I'm hoping because if we can get the Spirit Break Moonblast off, then we're in a, in, a, in a phenomenal position. Moonblast drop. Okay, we get the crit. Okay. Well, that's a bit unfortunate for my opponent. Let's see. If the Dazzling Gleam doesn't take us down here, then we know we, the crit didn't matter. Um... The crit mattered 100% because, yeah, the Oblivion Wing deck rate possibility would have made things way more difficult in the light screen. So the crit's pivotal there for us, uh, which is really unfortunate for my opponent. Uh, we can Calm Mind, I think, just once, and then we'll start chipping away at the Alchemy. Yeah, very difficult game, you know, um, and one where it definitely, without that crit, could have went... Could have went the wrong wrong way. Energy ball as well. Nice coverage there from the Alchemy. Um, but I don't think going to be enough. Especially because we've got the berry as well. And any drops with Moonblast going to be enough. But it just shows how kind of pivotal like Tapu Fini can be in these matchups. You know, in the more offensive variant. I feel, you know, at the very start of the format, I was like, offensive Finny's probably not going to be the most used Finny. But I think as we've got more and deeper into the format, offensive Finny is just way a way better option because i think there's too many dark type threats in the format and things that don't like water type attacks as well uh whereas if you're going the more supportive route you just don't have those options and like you see with the dialga builds with tapu finny where you're kind of utilizing the steel spikes and the max quakes to really set tapu finny up kind of a pseudo setup it's exactly like that in the zygarde team so anyway good game to my opponent apologies about the crit it definitely mattered but we take those when we get them and we'll jump over now and get you guys the rental code for today's team here is the rental code for today's team the zygarde team i hope if you do try it out you have a lot of fun with the team let me know down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on zygarde on the team in general and how you feel it fits into this format because i think it's a really interesting pokemon it is one of those pokemon that does rely heavily on setting it up getting those boosts into attack because it just doesn't have the damage output which is one of the drawbacks i think from the other restricteds where they're straight off the bat able to hit very hard zygarde needs swagger support it needs weakness policy support it needs a boost in those attacks to be really doing the the significant damage that you need it to otherwise it's a little bit underwhelming at times and that's one of the drawbacks i would find with it other than that though and other than the fact that you've got some really tough matchups in this format like the ice rider calyrex maybe glastria some other ice type attackers and things like that zygod performs pretty well um so i hope you have fun with it friends i'm gonna leave it there i'm not gonna go too long into this team we've got the thunderous there it's a nice addition we brought over from the other one and i think it performs very well it's shown today how effective it can be at supporting zygod which is always very nice um and i think that the mix of pokemon we've got support everything really cohesively you know you've got nice cores in there the firewater grass core you've got the thunderous there for the support the grimmsnarl for the support and the zygarde the centerpiece of the team which is always very useful so have fun with it like i say friends have a great weekend whatever you are up to we'll be back next week with more content on the channel doing more vg stuff and i've got a few additional videos that'll be thrown up next week as well in regards to vgc content so keep an eye out for those have a great weekend and i'll see you all for another episode very soon so until then take care bye bye